October 18th, 2020, starting on the RV-10. Uh, first step of Section 6, Vertical Stabilizer, and uh, I'm going to switch the camera to um, time-lapse mode in a minute, but just wanted to talk about what we're going to do. We're going to be marking, the first step is to mark and cut the uh, spar caps, the vertical stabilizer spar, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take two of these VS1014 pieces, uh, angle aluminum, going to clamp them back to back or something to get the bow out of them, mark them uh, for an angle, and then cut that off on the bandsaw, and those will be the spar caps that will fit. So this is the vertical stabilizer spar, and these spar caps will go down in here. So we have to cut this like that and do another one for the other side. So that's the plan. So we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing I do is peel off the blue vinyl protective coating, and then I clamp the two, uh, I got both pieces of aluminum angle, one for each spar cap. At the moment, they're identical uh, to each other, but once you're done uh, marking and measuring and marking and cutting them, you'll basically end up making a left and a right, so of course you want to be careful to make, uh, to make the two pieces a, a left and a right. Uh, you also have to watch out, you know, picture the cross section of these things. It's, it's an L. It's not, you know, just a V where each side is the same. It's an L. One, one side is longer than the other. Uh, so you need to be careful which side you're removing the material from. And then the other thing you do is you clamp the two together. Uh, the manual suggests you clamp them together. When, when they're the raw pieces, uh, they've got a pretty good bow to them. I assume part of the manufacturing process. And you want to sort of cancel that out, either either straighten them out by clamping each one to a, a flat surface like the table, or you can clamp them back to back uh, so that the bow in each one you know, cancels cancels out. And that's so that when you make a straight line, uh, you're making a straight line on a straight part and not a straight line on a curved part. And uh, that's what I'm doing there. I'm measuring carefully, very carefully, using my little magnification visor so that I can see the tick marks on the ruler. Make the measurements, draw the lines with a fine sharpie, double check the manual, and then I go over to cut. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. The first wing. The first cut. Uh, rear spar, rear vertical stabilizer spar cap. Measured it, 16 inches, and then nine sixteenths, I think. Measured about 100 times. Mark the line, I'm going to stay on this side of the line when I cut, and then I'll you know, use the use a file and a, a sander and whatnot to uh, make it nicer and prettier anyway. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of cuts. I'm going to make a couple of cuts like this so that the pieces will fall off as I go. Uh, so I won't get like 16 inches in. I'm going to turn on the vacuum so it'll be no big deal.
So there we go. I'm starting the first real cut on the uh, on the airplane. So as I mentioned, those first uh, two or three or four cuts I made, uh, you know, kind of perpendicular. Those were just relief cuts into the material that would be discarded. I did that so that, you know, as I was making this 16-inch cut here, uh, you know, I wouldn't find myself way down in a long, narrow cut with a bunch of uh, excess hanging off the side. Uh, so as I go along here, you can see the, you know, the piece will fall away. Uh, there it is right there. I'm, so I'm sort of removing that just so it won't get caught up. But, and I didn't really have my fingers as close to the saw blade as it probably looked. But, uh, anyway, and you know, one thing I'm noticing now when I watch the video that I didn't honestly notice before is the hideous strobe effect that my little, my little light, my little work light is making there. And when I first saw that, I thought, well, that must be some strange effect of the you know, the frame rate of the video and the fact that it's this little LED light. Uh, but, you know, I did notice that it it's not as bad when the saw is not running. So it must truly be the saw sort of, or the light itself sort of bouncing around uh, as the saw runs. Now, what that little light is, uh, my, my bandsaw there didn't come with a, a work light built into it. I can probably buy something extra and attach it, but what I did, uh, to be honest, I didn't really think I would want or need something like that because the, the lights above the saw there, uh, you know, I've got some pretty bright fluorescent and LED shop lights right above that table, and I uh, just didn't think I would need anything any brighter than that. But once you start using the saw and you're really focused right there where the blade is meeting the material and you're trying to follow a line, uh, it really is helpful to have a spotlight just right there. And so what I ended up doing just as a temporary solution was to just tape a little LED flashlight right there to the saw. And it, it's taped on there reasonably well, but apparently uh, it does get a little vibration going. Uh, it wasn't as bad in person as it seems to be in the video, but uh, now that I've seen it in the video, I'm sure I'll notice it more in person, so I'll have to do something about that. Uh, the saw blade that I've got on that saw is a 24 tooth per inch, uh, basically like a hacksaw blade. Uh, you, you, you certainly need something at least that fine uh, with this real thin aluminum material. And honestly, I looked for something a little finer than that even. Uh, and I had to special order this 24 tooth per inch one. I couldn't find anything any finer than that. Uh, this works great. It certainly makes quick work uh, of, of these aluminum pieces, but it does leave some pretty, you know, pretty good, pretty prominent tooth marks in the material, which is fine uh, because, you know, my intention here is I, I cut it on this and then I go back with the belt sander and, you know, sort of work my way down and make, make my line you know, more, more precise and then uh, also work at it with a uh, set of files and, you know, really uh, basically the saw is to, you know, remove, make the rough cut, remove the, the large amounts of material and then I work it down from there. And then of course, you know, uh, before I'm finished, I'm going to be deburring on the, the medium 3, 3M wheel on the, on the grinder back there in the background and, uh, you know, going after it with scotch Bright and uh, various tools to deburr and whatnot, so, uh, you know, it's really just not an issue that the sawtooth is 24. There was my wife commenting in the background. So yeah, here, here I am going at it with the, uh, with the belt sander. Uh, removing those sawtooth marks and you know getting the getting the cut a little more precise. And, uh, I'll do this for a while and get it the way I want. Remove uh, you know right where the right at the shallow angle where you're finishing up that cut. Uh, you know it tends to leave a little lump there, and you can kind of smooth that out with the 
the sander here, get things the shape you want them. And uh, like I say, once I'm happy with it here, I'll uh, I'll take it over and go after it with. Uh, I end up clamping it to the table in the you know other side of the, of the shop there, and uh, filing it down. So that's what we're doing now. And quite honestly, I spend a lot of time doing this. Uh, Filing, filing, filing. So yeah, uh, a lot of filing. And uh, in fact, I do so much filing that at some point I needed to get the jump back over there and suck up some of the chips that I had filed off. So, uh, you know, in retrospect, I probably could have done more with the power tools and less with the hand tools. Uh, but, you know, it was the first cut. I was being uh, conservative. I didn't want to mess anything up. It's a lot easier to take more material off than it is to put it back on. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's what I did. The other nice thing about, uh, you know, using a, a file on a long, straight, cut like that is you can make it uh, a lot straighter and that's what I'm doing there is checking it with a straight edge and I'm real happy with how how straight it is so now I take it over to the 3M wheel and I'm uh, you know removing any tooling marks and kind of doing a little deburring on on uh, you know some of the other edges as well and you know that's that, that'll be just about it for this part. I'm, uh, you know, checking it a little bit more. I think I uh, do a little bit with a, you know, a 3M Scotch Brite pad, uh, smooth it out, and then uh, this one's done. And I move on to uh, the other half, the other, uh, the other spark cap, the other side. So you know, that's what I'm doing there. And, uh, take it over to the to the saw. Same cut, but uh, mirror image, basically, and uh, pretty much go through the same, you know, the same process. Uh, make the cut, do a little work, uh, you know, work it down and uh, clean it up with the belt sander. Take off some of the real rough sawtooth marks, so uh, at least I got a better shot of the belt sander that time. And uh, then I go after this one with the file, and uh, just like the other one, I. File and file and file and uh, spend a lot of time filing. So pretty much the same drill here with this piece. Once I got it filed down uh, to the right shape, I took it over to the 3M wheel on the grinder, uh, got rid of any tooling marks and did some deburring and you know, cleaned it up nice. And uh, you know, that, that pretty much is it for the two spark caps. I took the two of them and clamped them back together, back to back, just to uh, you know compare, make sure they were Identical. They were pretty close. I think I did a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more on one, uh, just to you know to make them identical and uh, you know clean them back up on the Scotch Brite and the, or uh, took some Scotch Brite to them and uh, you know got them got them all uh, deburred and cleaned up and that's pretty much it for. Uh, Section uh, section six, step one. So here my lovely wife is helping me out for a second there. She's been down here the whole time, but uh, for the most part letting me have all the fun. But she helped me out there by peeling off uh, some more of the blue vinyl protective coating, uh, this time from the back side of the vertical stabilizer rear spar. So the next step is to clamp the... Uh, the two uh, spark caps that we just made uh, into uh, clamp them into the corners uh, between the web and the flanges of the rear spar there and uh, match drill the holes. So 
I'm match drilling for some clamping them in, and then I'm match drilling about every fourth hole uh, through the spar and into the spar doublers, and then uh, clecoing as I go and vacuuming as I go. Uh, and then what I'll end up doing is uh, once you've once you've done every fourth hole or so, you come back through and uh, drill the rest of the holes, and use a number. Uh, sorry, use a one eighth drill bit, which I I put a lot of double checking into. You know, do they mean in the plans? Are they talking about a one eighth bit, or a bit for a one eighth rivet? Because you know, a one eighth bit is a little bit different than the number thirty drill bit that you would use for a one eighth rivet. Uh, they're about thirty thousandths or so off. And you know, reading ahead in the plans a couple of steps, you're once you've got a few more pieces assembled into this uh, stack that's going to be the uh, the main spar here. You'll be coming back through and and uh, final drilling with the number thirty bit. So you know, it's in, intentional to drill these with a slightly smaller drill bit for this uh, you know match drilling step. So that's what I'm doing here, making sure to keep the drill perpendicular. They warn you about that as well, especially for uh, the holes that are going to go through the uh, hinge brackets. Uh, so at some point I actually go get a little square that I have and kind of hold it up to make sure I'm, I'm keeping perpendicular, for, especially for those holes. And uh, now I'm taking all the Clecos back out. So what you do, a lot of the work is to put something together, do a step, take it back apart. Put it back together, do another step, take it back apart. And uh, so what I'm doing here is deburring. All those holes I just drilled, uh, you take it back apart and deburr everything. And for the really thin, you know, for the fairly thin pieces, I'll take uh, the, the single edge deburring tool uh, that I have. It's just a little bit that goes in a, an electric drill or, you know, something like that. Uh, just a little hex bit, and I'll use that with my fingers. Uh, that's what I've found, you know, is sufficient. Seems to be sufficient. I've got my magnifier on there, so I can really look at that, you know, the hole and make sure I'm not, uh, you know, countersinking it. Really, I'm just hitting it really lightly and and getting rid of any burr, anything that I could feel with the fingerprint of my finger as I rub it along there. And then, uh, you know, with the spar cap itself, it's a little bit thicker material, first of all, and uh, I, I actually insert the bit into a, an electric screwdriver, just a cheapy one, and nothing more than the weight of the screwdriver, just, you know, let it sort of sit and blip the, blip the switch, you know, to get a, a, a few turns, a couple of turns with the bit, and then move on to the next one. And, uh, both sides of all the holes, and, uh, get everything deburred, and that's pretty much it for the day. Uh, that's what we got done. So it was a good, good first day.